this video we're talking about how to rationalize the denominator of a fraction when we have radicals in the denominator. So before we learned that if we had a fraction like 1 over the square root of 3, we like to do what's called rationalize the denominator, which basically just means get the square root out of the denominator. And the way that we did that was we multiplied by root 3 over root 3. We took the square root from the denominator and we multiplied that by the numerator and the denominator. The reason is because then when we multiply across we get 1 times the square root of 3 in the numerator which is square root of 3 and in the denominator we got square root of 3 times square root of 3 which is 3 and now you can see we've removed the square root from the denominator so that was called rationalizing the denominator. But how do we do this if we have a fraction with more than just a single square root in it? In this case, we have negative 4 plus the square root of 3. What we do is we multiply by what's called the conjugate. The conjugate is going to be the same two terms, but with a different sign in between. So because we have a positive sign here, the conjugate of negative 4 plus square root of 3 is going to be negative 4 minus square root of 3. So the negative 4 stays the same and the square root of 3 stays the same. The only thing we change is the sign in between them. In this case the sign's a positive so we change it to a negative and we multiply the conjugate by both the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to multiply by negative 4 minus root 3 divided by negative 4 minus root 3. The reason why multiplying by the conjugate is so useful is because when we multiply out the denominator, when we FOIL out the denominator, we're going to get that middle term to cancel. So here's what this looks like. We're going to multiply these fractions together. Multiplying the numerators together, we do 1 times negative 4 minus root 3. This 1 doesn't have any effect, and so we still just get negative 4 minus root 3 in our numerator. In our denominator, we have to think about this as two binomial terms that we're multiplying together and we're going to FOIL this out. So doing our first two terms, negative 4 times negative 4 gives us a positive 16. Negative 4 times a negative root 3 gives us a positive, those two negative signs cancel, positive 4 root 3. Then we have a positive root 3 times a negative 4, so we're going to get minus 4 root 3. And then positive root 3 times a negative root 3 is going to give us a negative 3 because, right, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. And we have this negative sign, so we have minus 3. Now here's what we were talking about with the canceling. Notice that we have a positive 4 root 3 and a negative 4 root 3. When we add those together, of course, we're going to get these to cancel. The net of these two is just 0. So what we're left with is just negative 4 minus root 3 in the numerator and 16 minus 3, or just 13 in the denominator. So you can see how we've rationalized the denominator by removing the square roots. The denominator is just 13 now. There's no square root in the denominator at all. And that's going to be true every time when we use the conjugate. As long as we have two terms like this separated by a plus or minus sign, we can flip the sign, keep the two terms the same, that'll be the conjugate. And as long as we multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate, we'll get this to cancel and we'll be able to simplify that way. Now let's look at another example here. We have 3 divided by 2 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 2. We have square roots in our denominator, so we want to rationalize. We want to keep the two terms exactly the same, but we want to flip the sign in between. So because we have a positive sign, we want to make it a minus sign, and we're going to get 2 root 3 minus root 2 divided by 2 root 3 minus root 2. And when we do our multiplication, when we multiply the 3 by the numerator, this is just the distributive property, so we want to make sure that we multiply the 3 by this first term and also by the second term. So our new numerator is going to be 3 times 2 root 3, which is going to give us 6 root 3. And then 3 times a negative root 2 is minus 3 root 2. Then in our denominator, we're going to FOIL these out. So again, we have 2 binomials multiplied together and we're going to FOIL. Multiplying the first terms, 2 root 3 times 2 root 3 is going to give us 4 when we multiply 2 by 2. And root 3 times root 3 is going to be just 3, so we get 4 times 3. Then we get 2 root 3 minus the square root of 2 is going to be minus 2 root 3 root 2. Then we have square root of 2 times 2 root 3. When we multiply the inner terms, that's going to be plus 2 root 3 root 2. And then our last terms, root 2 and negative root 2, is going to be minus 2. And again, just like before, we have a negative 2 root 3 root 2 and a positive 2 root 3 root 2, 
those two will cancel. The sum of those is zero. And we're just left with four times three, which is 12 minus two. So when we simplify, we're gonna get six root three minus three root two in our numerator and in the denominator 12 minus 2 which is 10. And just like before we removed all of the square roots from the denominator we're only left with a whole number so that's how we use the conjugate method to rationalize the denominator.